Hey everyone, we have a verbatim USB flash drive in for data recovery. It's not working, it doesn't detect in a computer. If we have a look here, we do have a manufacturer date of 2012, which makes it about 12 years old. If we connect it to an amp meter, we do get a current. It draws current, but it's still not detecting. So let's take a closer look under microscope. So the first thing I always check on the microscope is what technology is this USB stick. There's a little bit of a clue in the silk screen up here, AU698X. That must be like a placeholder for different versions. If we have a look closer at the controller chip on this, it's an Alcor Micro. And they're a Taiwanese base chip manufacturer who make controller chips for USBs, memory cards and SSDs. Now this one in particular is an AU6987ANHL. Now the first thing that jumps out at me is the solder joints from this USB connector. They look a little bit too shiny and balled up with extra solder than I'm used to seeing from the factory. Here's what one, here's what they usually look like from the factory. Nice clean solder joints where the solder's underneath the pads. This one is all balled up with solder that looks fresh and shiny from over the top. So it looks like someone's already been here and soldered this connector back on. Let's have a look from the other side. Yeah, there's some unusual kind of properties here. The solder here, the, the way these pins here are bent down, I'm not sure if it's the original connector, if it's been soldered back on or replaced. So this is probably been snapped off in the past and someone's been unsuccessful trying to get access to it again. So we'll check very carefully the condition and state of every component. Here, Here I'll, I'll check, check the, the continuity, continuity of, of each pin. pin. So I'll probe all four pins and just make sure they're okay. Because you just don't know what's broken inside the connector. So that one's solid. We've got a data pin. So all the pins are soldered correctly. So we'll check the wires that go from this connector here. So this is our ground. And we'll check it with all the caps. So we've got a good negative or ground across the whole PCB. That looks fine. We can follow the voltage one. This is the plus five volts comes into this R5 here. We should follow through this resistor, get to this capacitor. We will lose it after the capacitor, but it goes in here. So we'll add voltage and we'll check that. So now we can see if our voltage is getting through. We've got five volts connected. We see it at this pin. Yes, we do. We've got five volts. We're gonna follow that. 5 volts, we've got a drop from the resistor, capacitor, now is that ground maybe? And 5 volts in, that might be decoupling to ground. Okay, so we've got 5 volts going into this controller and that must be our input pin. Now, now while we got it connected, connected to power, power, we'll check our data positive line. If I touch here, we get 3.1 volts. And if you can just see, there's trace wires, looks like they fold around the back and then meet up with these resistors. So one of these should be married up with the data positive line. So I think it's this one. Yeah, 3.1 volts. And if we go here, zero volts. We should probably get the same signal at the top resistor. Yes, we do. So there's our two resistors connected to our data pins. We go on the back. We don't have voltage. Three volts, three volts in. Nothing on the back of this. Okay. Oh, yeah, we do. Sorry, it's my um, multimeter probe mustn't be touching. Might be a bit of corrosion and... 
gunk on there, flux, who knows. So it's coming in there and we can see that trace wire marry up with the pin just here. I'm just going to get a smaller probe. Again, let's make sure that this pin is connected to the control. So up here, and here's my probe. Yep, it's working. Follow it and it comes down to this pin right here. So I touch it at the top and I know that it's getting through the solder joint. A little bit tricky to get in there, sorry. Okay, so we know it's this bottom line here. Let's try and get a good touch on that. Okay, we're definitely getting into this microcontroller pin too. Now, now I'll recheck, recheck this, this with, with continuity, continuity mode. mode. Okay, okay. I've got to get onto, onto this pin. pin. Okay, yeah, that's, that's better. better. Now, now we'll, we'll check, check the data, data negative, negative pin, pin, which is this one, and I'm, I'm sure, sure it comes, comes here. here. Yep. So it's getting through this resistor. That's, That's a bit of a better connection. Follow that trace line and it's the third pin from the top. Okay, so all four pins are connected to this controller. So something else is wrong. It's not that obvious, but we'll check all our electronics just to make sure. So we'll make sure our capacitors aren't shorted to ground. Good, good, good. Okay, they're good. We've got, and the only thing that's left is these resistors. So we've got a resistor here. Current can pass through it. I'm not sure what its value is meant to be. Uh, same with the two we already checked. Okay, so this third one here has a different value than everything, everything else. else. It's, it's got, got 330 ohms. ohms. I'm, I'm not, not sure. That, that could, could be correct. correct. I mean, 330 is the standard value they, they make. This, this one's, one's about, about 3 ohms. ohms. On the On back, back, there's, there's nothing. nothing. And, and don't, don't be fooled. fooled. You, you want to make sure that maybe something, something hasn't been broken off or removed, but it doesn't look like it. Now, this, this one, one here, here that has, has a high resistance, what does it do? do? Let's, Let's get in nice and snug. And snug. It, it looks, looks like, like, I'll give you a bit of light. It, it looks, looks like this side is the ground side, so I'll probe ground. That's, that's, that's a ground. And, and it's got, got a line coming straight into the controller. controller. I, I wonder if we can find the schematics for this controller. controller. I'm, I'm going to have a look. You're not going to believe what I found in the corner of the internet hidden from the world. I did find a technical manual for this chip. So let's have a look and see if we can figure out what these pins are. And here we have the pin assignment and it's orientated exactly the way we've been looking at it. If you remember earlier, we were probing down here and getting our 5 volts, which you can see clearly labelled VDD 5 volts. Up the top here was our data pins. If you remember, number 3, data minus. Number 4, data positive. So this looks like it marries up with what we're seeing. Now the pin that I'm not sure about is called REXT, Rex. I don't know what that is. Okay, Rex external resistor 330, that has to be ohms, to ground. Well, that's exactly what we measured. So, what the hell does that do? I don't know. External resistor 330 to ground. I don't know what this achieves. Hmm. Okay, I think I assume that REXT must mean resistor external and it's got something to do with the chip that requires a 330 ohm resistor to ground. That's practically what I measured and found, so I'm less concerned about it. But I'm going to read through this technical document and see if there's anything else I can learn. You know one thing I haven't seen on this? A 12 megahertz crystal oscillator. 
There's definitely inputs for a crystal oscillator. If you have a look here, Y, Y1, Y is common for crystal oscillator, and it's missing one. You can see a silk screen version of a cylinder one. Doesn't look like the solder's been tampered with or one's been broken off. But the other thing earlier on the back is Y2. So it looks like there's a placeholder for a different package version of an oscillator, a more surface mount. So it looks like it's just whoever designed this PCB said, well, you can use a surface mount oscillator or the old cylinder version. And there's one not here, so that is a bit weird. I'm wondering, did it get broken off in this, this impact? So let's just probe all the pins. We've got our orientation here, a little circle marries with our circle here. We've got pin 1 to 12, 13 down here to 24. 25 goes up to 36, 37 to 48. So I might have a look at all the power pins. Now the first pin should be ground. We'll go to continuity mode and we will check that. Oop, that's not continuity mode. That is... Okay, we got ground. We'll go back to voltage. So pin 2 should be VDD, so that's voltage digital. We got 1.8. Um, that is correct. That's a 1.8 input voltage. So we got our next IO pins data uh, minus positive. We've got our resistor, we've already checked that. Then we've got 3.3 volts in this pin here. Uh, sorry, where the capacitor is. Yeah, 3.3. That's good. Then we're going to go to continuity and check that these two pins should be ground. They are. Now here's our crystal pins. We've got oscillator, 12 megahertz oscillator input. We've got 3.2 volts here. I don't know if it's 3.2 volts it's oscillating. Like inputting from where though? Would it have an internal crystal as well? I doubt it. I think I think we're missing a crystal. This does look suspicious. So we've got an input and an output. Both have 3.3 volts. Hmm. The next one down is 1.8. Sorry about that. 1.8 and then this one's ground so no voltage check it on continuity we got ground so that's this whole row looks like a lot of voltages and then it looks like the next row down here sets up our voltages for the NAND memory chip this crystal so we, let's just see if I can figure out Hang on, we need continuity mode. I want to see... Go to there. Okay, so that's our import, crystal input. And crystal output. There's no crystal on this. I'm wondering now if it was on the back. Because this side doesn't look, like, doesn't look like it had one. But I'll get one and sold a crystal to it. Might be the only thing that's wrong. Um, while we're down here, we might just check the bottom pins. I'm interested to see the bottom row. So the bottom row, what do we say? We've got 13, pin 13. 13 is the five volt input, so we already figured that out. It's a little bit shy of it, but it should work. Uh, we should have a 3.3 output on this one. I'm not sure what it's for. Probably the NAND memory. Uh, 1.8 output for the core. Yes, we have 1.8. That must be the core for the CPU. Maybe the NAND as well. What's next to it? Ground. So we'll check the ground. Definitely got a ground. Back to voltage and. Blanking when when system access, yeah, okay, it's nothing. 
It's got 3.3, some kind of digital. Uh, flash write protect, okay. It's a digital pin. Radio, so, and the rest are for the NAN uh, data, IO, and NAN voltages. Okay, there's nothing really I'm going to discover on this row or this row because they're all the I.O. operations of the NAND. So I'm going to solder a couple of jumper wires onto this crystal oscillator input and output. And I'm going to connect it to my oscilloscope. And I'm just going to zoom in and see if there is a 12 megahertz signal. I, I highly doubt it is, but we should do it anyway just to show you the difference. Um, and then I'm going to put a crystal here and hopefully it's looking like maybe it's been to a computer repair shop or something. I'll have to ask the client and they haven't been able to figure it out. So we'll put some nice big solder balls there to make it easy. I've got a couple of jumper wires. We'll go... Hmm... Should we go down? Just looking for stability when I do this. In fact, I might just tin these wires first. That'll make it easier to stick. They're a bit dirty. That is working, I think. Clean that tip. All right. So we just, all we're doing is putting our oscilloscope probes onto this. I think we're going to have a voltage that's flat signal. So without a, um, without, a, the crystal just provides a clock. A clock for this little controller, little CPU. It's basically like a drummer of the man. Everything has to be synced to a clock. Okay. All the digital input, everything gets all timed together, otherwise it would crash, just like before the trains. They had to invent all these um, clocks that were synchronized for the trains, so all the trains wouldn't crash. Same thing with computer circuits. Okay, so we've got two probes connected to our input and output of the oscilloscope, and let's have a look what it looks like. Okay, so we've got two 3.3 volt lines. And it's a bit hard to see, I know, but 3.28 volts, which is what we measured. And it's a reasonably straight line, kind of messy. So if this was if this was oscillating at 12 megahertz, we'd pick that up. And we don't. We just got a little bit of a noisy signal. Let's connect a 12 megahertz oscillator and see if we can get this USB to work. We don't need our jumper wires anymore. But it will be handy to keep those solder balls there fresh. Here's my little 12 megahertz oscill oscillating crystal. You may recognize it from another video. I'm going to just... Um, let's anchor one side first. Wait that for heel. And then I'll try and bend this wire in. You want to be careful that you don't rip pads up pads off soldering so we'll put this in a bit closer we'll pull that into position uh, is one wire longer than the other I can't tell kinda is let's get them a bit closer together Okay, that one was easier. Let's just hold this one in. So you don't want to short circuit other wires that are nearby. That should be enough. So I've taken the crystal off. I did test it and we got the same outcome. There was no 12 megahertz signal. Um, I've been having a look online to see if these actually do have crystals. Some of them do, some of them don't. If they do have a crystal, it would probably be paired with a load capacitor, which you can see on the input side is, I think, here. And it doesn't seem to show that either. So maybe it never had one. 
I could possibly solder it onto the back here, but it honestly, ah, maybe it didn't have one. Okay, so all the electronics, I can't find anything wrong. So it's reached the stage that I'm gonna do a chip off. That crystal oscillator, I'm not sure. Got the same signal with and without one. So let's uh, prepare this chip and we'll take it off or heat him up. Everything under the chip looks okay. We'll clean it up so we got nice good contacts to read it. So I'm gonna take this chip, put it in a special reader, and I'm gonna reverse engineer how the data is stored on it. This will be the most convenient way for me to recover the data for this case. There's still other hardware options. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next video.